We're checking in with our Locked On Bracket breakdowns again for the Sweet 16 matchups. We're checking in now with Locked On Razorbacks host John Neighbors, who is probably not very happy. We gave him a little time to unwind, but this was this was bad. This was hard to watch, I'm sure, and hard for you to watch in person. Um, was How much of this was Arkansas not playing that well, and how much of this was UConn just being ridiculously dominant? Well, I mean, I think in any case, it will always be both. But in this particular case, I, I'm leaning towards UConn. I know that Arkansas uh, had, did not play well, but there's been games that they've won this year where they didn't play exceptionally well, or and there's been games that they've been close and even in position to win where they haven't played well. Mm-hmm. But when you run into a, a buzzsaw like what UConn was tonight, there wasn't anybody in the country that was going to beat them. And, you know, I don't care if you're Bama or Houston or whoever, anybody that would have stepped on that floor tonight would have lost this game. And I mean, when you, when they shot almost 60% from the field, uh, 45% from three made 81% of their free throws, uh, just it was so dominant with different reasons and different guys. And Hawkins was a phenomenal. And Sinago was phenomenal. I mean, they just, they came in, they set the tone early and they didn't look back and it was just tough for Arkansas to respond. I mean, obviously you said a lot there just in that alone. It looked like one of those games where it's just nothing was going to stop UConn no matter what it was. Um, What's what's most frustrating when you go from such a high, obviously, to make the Sweet 16, you know, and and this is the third year in a row that they've done that, but then to get to this point again and not quite get there uh, over that hump? I mean, it's disappointing, it, but it's also because of the fact they made it to the Sweet 16 and, and nobody expected them to, especially the way at the end of this regular season. It, it, it's, it feels bad now, like it sucks for fans right now, but I think once it kind of cools off and people reflect, you're like, you know, it was, it could have been a lot worse. You know, there's other teams out there and especially in the NCAA tournament that were much better than you, that had better seeds than you, that were better pro, like people viewed them as being better than you. Mm-hmm. And they probably would have loved to have been in the sweet 16. Now it sounds like loser talk, but it's true. It's like, you may think, you know, it seemed like Arizona, you don't think that they would have like loved to be in the sweet 16 instead. So you got to look at it in that perspective. Arkansas is, is still a program with high expectations. I think next year they're going to have great players returning. They're going to add great players. So there's no reason to think that the program's down or anything, but you know, going eight and three and the past three years in the NCAA tournament is nothing to sneeze at. And three straight Sweet Sixteens is something that's extremely impressive, and you just got to continue to build from it. Certainly a good thing to look at. What does this team look like? Is there going to be a lot of turnover? What are you expecting um, next year for the team? It's an Eric Musselman team, so I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> I mean, it's fair. just it's, – it's, it's got a he, – he always has a completely different-looking team pretty much each and every year, except for Devo Davis. He's kind of seems to be the big constant. But uh, I think Devo comes back. He's got one more year. I think, I, from what I understand, I'm just getting no, uh, no evidence or anything like that, but I feel like you're going to have Trevin Brazil coming back, which he's dealt with an injury this year. That's a huge, huge return. I think that you're able to not only get him, but also Jordan Walsh. He's kind of the X factor. He said something tonight I thought was really interesting in the locker room where he was alluding to his future, just saying, I'm just going to get back into the lab, work on my game, listen to my coaches, and just try to be a, uh, you know, try to build upon and be a better winner next year. So it's like, you know, does that mean he's coming back? People are leaning towards that. So if you get him back, and they know uh, they got two five star players coming in. Bay Falls, one of the big names that's coming out of that. We know Must does a great job in the transfer portal. So, uh, I think that if you can just get those three players in Brazil, Walsh and Devo all back, that's a great core to build around and to add some pieces there to make it even better next year. Absolutely. Nothing to sneeze at making the sweet 16. John, we'll leave you alone in Vegas with your thoughts. I'm sure Locked On Razorbacks will have a full recap of all of this. And of course, everybody can check out Locked On College Basketball as well. This is all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.